down, two left. This guy doesn't look like he sleeps. Neither does she, actually. We'll do her and we'll do a random name. Ruby! She looks like a ruby. Anticipation, da, da, da. eight hours, one journal. Okay, yep, yep. The uh, day brings physical assault and the biggest trauma of my life. Oh, shit. Alright, so we, we skipped all of that. We got bit already. It's just, we just skipped it. Save it, I know this goes. Fluffy bum. Blah blah catification, blah blah evasive answers, blah blah antidote. And basically, need my help. Did I miss anything? Um, no, not really. Wow, you really did read that journal from front to back, didn't you? Front to back. Are you going to help us or not? We're not helping the kitties this time. Help you after what you did to me? How could I ever trust you? Listen to the music. You steal from me, put me in, a mor in mortal danger, lie to me, get what you want. <laughs> what would you do in my situation? Ouch. This is a ludicrous story about where cats is enough to make me think I must be going insane. So no, it's up to you to sort whatever is going on here. I will have enough of my hand, uh, on my hands looking after myself. Lame. What did I tell you? I knew this human lacked intelligence and stamina to be a part of our research. You rude self opinionated Moggy? Mo Mo Moggy? I would sooner turn into a cat than help you. This, there's a shocked silence. Slowly the small calico cat pads up to me. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, human. If there's a way I could help you, I would. Trixie begins to sob quietly before turning away. Oh, we made the kitty sad! Now you say it begins to blur, but I can't just make out. I can't just, I can just about make the cat, uh, what? But I can just about make out the cats. That's a weird sentence. Retreating in the thick of the forest. Okay. So we told them to fuck up. So we're more and more tired and f foggy. I somehow make the way back to the camp. Area. And that's it, really. I did plenty of work over the next few weeks. Oh, did we just, like... Completely, this is what I was scared of. I was scared if we did that, we would completely skip over, like, the opportunity to do stuff. I can't remember much of it. I'm seeing this, uh, good, I just can't recall any of it. Big memories. At the end of the day, I'm really not that bothered. It feels like a distant dream to me now. I stretch out in the sand, enjoying the midday sun and fur, lazily licking my paws of scraps left from my morning feed. Meow. <laughs> We went, we went, that was quick. We went straight from human to kitty. We did nothing. Look at that. Nothing got done because, uh, and we stayed single because we decided, um, we weren't going to help the cats. Well, Ruby, Ruby's story is very, very, was very quick. All right. Paul, you uh you're the la you're our last hope. Eight hours, one journal, and wild, one ch wild cat chase later. Oh, this is my first day bring physical. Okay. Oh, it's awake, human. I need to talk to you. Save it. I know how this goes. Fluffy bone. Blah, blah, blah. Same shit. Um, no, not really. Oh, you really did read that journal front to back. Front to back. We're helping them this time. Fine, I'll help, whatever. See you after my day job. 
Ruby was like, wow, we're gonna camp feeling a bit less grumpy. I'm just about to enter my lab when a legitimate work when a catalog beeps a message without any contact information. Don't give the game away. What? What? Who the hell? Someone needs to take that phone from the Mason from Ma away from Mason Mary Gold. The rest of the day is uneventful. Just working in the lab with the professor. I, feel, I I can't help but feel I missed some shit with that last that game blunder. Can't wait to start packing this mystery. Suppose uh, cats are starting at starting point. They must know more than letting on. Okay, we got a few recons. We got a few recons. Um, five. Mr. Marigold knows something that I don't. I need to follow him and find out exactly what that might be. I have a feeling I won't like it though. Let's do it. Today is my off day, and I'm trying to stay out of sight. The professor doesn't like me being around camp on my own downtime. On my downtime. I don't know why. But he's always pushing me off to explore. I feel he wants time without me around to get on with things if he'd rather I didn't see. Maybe I'm being paranoid, but he definitely seems shifty to me. So today, I have a plan. It means I have to hang around until Mr. Marigold does his mid-morning errands, errands, and I'm trying not to be seen. I don't have too long to wait. He's like clockwork. Every day at this time, he leaves the camp carrying a large bag and doesn't return until an hour later. I have offered to help him a couple of times, but I'm always met with, a, with stonewalling. This is the day when I find out what he's up to. I let him get a bit of a head start and then begin to follow. I try to use my new catification properties to my best advantage. Stealth, nimbleness, agility. I'm so much fitter than when I arrived to this island. My eyesight and hearing are fantastic. He's headed into the forest as I suspected he would. That makes it so much easier for me to go unnoticed. We travel for about 10 minutes at a, pl at a good pace until the densest part of the, into the densest part of the wooded, wooded area. Finally, he stopped up ahead and I can see a type of shack covered in creepers and ivy that make great camouflage. You really wouldn't notice this place from any kind of distance outside the hut. He bends down, I think he's picking something up. Then he disappears inside. I bide my time finding a good out of the way hiding place. After a short while, he reemerges, bends down again, then straightens up before setting off the way he came. When I'm satisfied that he's not going to return, I gingerly make my way to the shack. Up close, I can see if it's sturdier I can see it's a sturdier structure than I thought, and the door's locked. I bend down as he did to start looking for a key. It's pretty obvious. There's a large flat stone in front of me. I lift it a little to slide my fingers under the edge. I fill it instantly. I put the key in the lock and take a deep breath, unsure of what I might find in there. I open the door. It's dark. There are no windows. Just a small skylight letting in enough light to see that there are lamps obviously powered by solar panels on the roof. I turn one on. <sighs> it takes me a moment to understand what I'm looking at. It's dirty and dingy. There's shelves along two of the walls that have cages and the cages are housing cats there's an eerie silence. None of the cats are making a sound. I go up to one of the cages to check if they are even alive. Hello, kitty. There's a small cat that I would judge between 10 and 14 weeks old. Its eyes are open, but vacant, as if it doesn't see me. I go to the next cage, another youngster, another, and another. My stomach lurches as I realize these are, these are the kittens from the camp that I had been released, that had been released. Ha ha! The darkness! The story is starting to come together! No. What are they doing to you? Why are you here? I turn to the other wall and I'm struck dumb by what I see. More small cats, but, a different, but in different stages of distress. 
One has an eye bandage, the other has... The other eye is weeping with pus. <laughs> Another has most of the fur off on its back shaved. Or there is an open sore. Another has a bandaged leg. Too short, as though its paw has been amputated. Hmm. I begin sweating. Breathing is difficult. I need to get out. I stumble towards the door and fall to my knees outside. I gulp in the cool air and try to focus my thoughts. This is the str strongest proof so far that there is a secret that there are secret tests being carried out on cats. Tests that the Professor Popper doesn't want me to know about. Are they all in on it? Are the Marigolds are? Uh, the Marigolds are, obviously. But what about Zane? Do I dare mention it to anyone? I need to, more info first. When I've gathered myself sufficiently, I re-enter the Hell House and try to find some paperwork, anything that might explain what's going on here. I look through the drawers of the filing cabinet in the corner and pull out some of the folders. I switch on another lamp and sit on the floor and begin reading. They're experiments, obviously, but for what? The data suggests a large number of chemical substances have been tested on the subjects. Instead of the usual catalog of blood and tissue samples tested to evaluate the cats, the data is, is all related to chemical compounds. They're what's being tested. Some of the records go way back, years of data. As I put the papers back, I see the waste product bins. I remove the lid, and it's almost entirely full of empty ketamine bottles. So that's why there's no sound. These animals are drugged out of all lucidity. Lucidity? Yeah. I don't know if you can hear me, or even if you understand me, but I'm making a promise to all of you that I'll get you, I will get to the bottom of this, and I will help you. Whatever it takes, you will be well and free again. Hold tight, kittens. I will be back. I feel terrible leaving them there, but I know it would be foolish to arouse suspicion until I know what I'm dealing with. I make my way back to camp with a heavy heart and a fierce determination. But with fierce determination. Holy shit! Guys, shit got real! Yes, new unlocks. Yes, new unlocks! Recon 12. This game is not so, like, nice anymore. I'm not sure how I should feel. Like, I'm not a cat person at all, but Jesus. You don't fuck with kittens, man. Alright, we got romance. We're a recon. We'll do another recon. We got two recons, so... We got what? One, two, three, four. We got four recons left. I don't think I have. Okay. The professor's laptop probably has all hands, all kinds of interesting files on it. Luckily for me, there's a certain white haired nerd who says he can hack it for me. I wonder who this nerd is. You know, I love me a nerd. The professor keeps all the data on a closed network. I have a clearance. I have clearance to access a few files, but most of the info is encrypted and inaccessible to anyone but the professor himself. Good thing, then, that he left his laptop in attendant for before going on a trip to the mainland. Ha ha! He's gone to collect some specific components for some of the experiments we're running soon. Or so he says. So I'm holding down the fort. When I open it, I see his laptop is running some... The same technology as the catalog. It's the only working computer that I've seen on the island. It's password protected, as I expected, but that's not a problem because I have a trick up my sleeve. Kibbles, come over here. Work your magic. Kibbles has been playing with what looks to be a rubber band under the professor's desk. <clears throat> he leaps up and stares at the screen with huge black pupils. It's a Unix system. I know this. Okay, so... You'll have to use an OS exploit and a pen drive to boot straight into the straight to the desktop. Smart kitty. Okay, slow down. I'm not good with this stuff. After some fiddling and impatient instructions from Kibbles, we reach the desktop. The professor's desktop background is a picture of him surrounded by cats. It should look cute, but it looks strangely unnatural. We search for the files. Kib says we need we can get past the authentication process, but we still need to figure out how to decrypt them. He sets a process going to try to work out the encryption key. While that's working in the background, I take a look around the rest of the computer to see what else I can find. 
I found a folder with pictures of all the cats in it. They all they look like they were taken from a distance with a powerful zoom lens. Caught me mid sneeze. Not very professional. Why do you think he has those photos? Well, I don't think he he took them. He's only interested in cats as research subject. Really? Then how do you explain the desktop background? Don't know. The computer makes a noise. The program's finished trying to decrypt the files. Ugh. What is it? I couldn't get past the encryption. We can only access one file, and it's the an old one. I look at what, what he's referring to. Oh, but it's a good one. Yeah? What's it say? I read the document out loud. Observation pro on Project Felix. Day 47. Subject's ears are becoming pointed. Hearing range has expanded to 60 khz. I'm assuming kilohertz. Subject appears to be developing a reflective layer behind the retina. Eyesight in darkness has improved 50% since the last measured. Since last measured, subject's field of view has expanded approximately 200 degrees. Body hairs become less dense, long hairs around the mouth and eyebrows have begun to grow faster and appear to carry sensory information. Attempts to reverse the changes have so far proved fruitless. Tomorrow we will carry out further invasive procedures. That doesn't sound good. Day 75. Administered a combination of that word, glucose, and chemical extracted from the feral cat's adrenaline glands. Initial results are promising. Subject appears to be in acute pain at all times. Day 76. Subject has perished overnight due to sudden heart failure, potentially as a result of increased stress. Postmortem to be carried out at 1700 hours. Whoa, that's dark. Yes, it is. Probably a good thing you never told the professor you're catified. I nod and download the file to the pen drive as Kibble's instructed. I close the laptop. That's enough for one day, I think. God, I, no, no, we just scratched the surface, motherfucker. Like, we need more. Yeah, new unlocks, recon one, okay. <sighs> I guess we got more recon now, which, that's a good thing, right? Recon one. And 12. Only got enough for one left, so I'm off Explorer Island today with Kibbles, a certain charming Irishman, Irish cat. There's something the professor is hiding from me. Oh, God. Okay, um. We'll do one. There's a trapdoor in the floor of the lab that is completely off limits. I've spied the professor going in and out a couple times. He always keeps it locked. And it's never mentioned. He uses a keycard to enter, but as far as I'm aware, there are no copies. Strange, though, having a trapdoor in a tent, let alone a high-tech security. I can't help wondering that what on earth could be down there. I don't know if it's the catification or the environment, but my curiosity has really started to get the better of me recently. I've spent some time ru ruminating, ru ru ruminating, rum rum whatever that word is and have finally formulated a plan on how to get past the trap door and into whatever is beneath it. But this is more of a one-person job. I need to find an accomplice. I made my way down to the beach to a familiar site. At this time of day, Snooty Booty, McMurphy, and Kibbles are reclining in the afternoon sun. Now we're doing this again, huh? The gang's all here. Can't you count? There's only three of us. I didn't mean literally, Kibbles, but it's good to catch you. I need a willing volunteer to help me on my mission. Paul, my dear, charmed though I always am to see you, you realize you have a particular—you realize you really do have a particular skill for interrupting one's beauty sleep. Now, if you could, now, if you could, you could just move slightly to your left. You're casting a shadow. My sh I shift my position to lower and lower my expectations. This may not go as smoothly as I'd hoped. How about it, Murph? Fancy going on an adventure? Ah, Kara. 
You must know cats a bit better than that by now. You're going to have to give us all the details before you get any of us to agree to anything. Okay, what about this for intrigue? I have discovered a trap door in the ground in the ground of the main lab. Yeah, what about it? Oh, you know about it already? Obviously, it's not exactly hidden. What is so what's down there? Dunno, don't care. Only the professor goes down there, Kara. And you can't blame us for not wanting to keep him company. Not that we'd be welcome. Come on, guys. Aren't any of you slightly curious? I already have a plan figured out. All I need is someone smart, stealthy, and skillful to be my partner in crime. Ah, Kara. There are many things I would do for you, but going into the professor's territory is not one of them. I'm surprised at you, McMurphy. I thought you, at least, would be lured by the thrill of the unknown. Unknown my eye, whatever the professor is keeping down there can't be good. That much we do know. I don't even know why you'd asked us. How can a bunch of cats help you? Ah, I'm glad you asked that, Kibbles. In brief, I've already worked out that the door is operated by an automated mechanism. When the boss walks through the, the door, it closes and locks behind him instantly. Well, almost instantly. It's your job to prevent that mechanism from making contact. Obviously, but how? I will sneak you into the lab in my backpack. And when the professor is exiting the trap door, I will distract him while you make a break for it. And using your epic weapon as a tool, prevent the door from fully sealing. Oh yeah, my weapon? What would that be? Your pebble. Kibbles looks like he's about to scarper, scrap, scaper, scarper. I don't know what that word is. And I know I have to move quick. I open my rucksack. And you pop. I knew you'd be the bravest cat of them all. McMurphy flashes me a wink and nudges Kibbles forward. Valiant and brave as ever, Kibbles. You're a better man than me. Kibbles gulps and sinks to my backpack. I head back into the lab before I can change his mind. Ha ha! Now you've got to be as quiet as you can. Wolf of voice comes from inside my bag. Hey Paul, your job is really boring. <laughs> Kibbles, my job isn't waiting around for people to go through trap doors all day. What exactly is your job? Well, it varies from day to day. Most of the time I'm looking after the cats. Friendly Tabby called Oscar meows from his cage as if he knows what we're talking about. Other days, I might receive deliveries of samples and have to run extensive tests on the log and information. Hey Paul, your job is really boring. <laughs> Shh! I cut him off as the trapdoor begins to open and I give my backpack an elbow as the professor emerges. Oh, good day, Paul. Beginning of the uh, beginning on the new samples, are we? Always good to get a head start. Oh yes, sir. I actually wanted to ask your opinion on this one. As I walk the professor over to the workstation, Kibbles has already leapt out of leapt out of the bag and darted through the trap door just before it closed. Oh, actually, I see what I've done. I misread it. I misread the eight for a three. Now it all makes sense. Sorry to waste your time, professor. No worries, Paul. Say, may I ask when the last time was that you visited the... Man, I can't read. Whatever that word is. Just before I came to the island. Everything was perfectly normal, sir. Jolly good. Just checking. Optician. Optician. I should have known that. The professor pushes his specs up to the bridge of his nose and wafts out of the room. I breathe a sign of relief and run over the kibbles. He was wedged... He's wedged a small rock inside the rim so that I can just pull the heavy door open. Well done, comrade. I knew you were the cat for the job. Kibbles looks proud in spite of his fear. Victory or death! I step down to join him, leaving the pebble wedged open the door above our heads. Wedging, wedging, wedging open door. Okay, the door above our heads. Immediately I can make out a staircase to in the gloom, taking us further underground. By the time we reach the last step, the temperature has changed noticeably, and I realize my teeth are chattering. So it's cold. Don't be scared, Paul. I'll protect you. Thank you, Kibbles. 
I fumble along the wall for a light switch. As soon as the lights come up, I cannot help but gasp. In front of us is, it says steel cabinets. The lights glint off them and forces my eyes into a squint. The place reminds me of something. I cannot think what. The drawers of cabinets are nearly labeled, each explaining what is contained within. Gallbladder, claw, front, left, uh, putrid gland. Oh, this, it, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like a... Um, What's that called? A morgue. Yeah. There are hundreds of these. Rows upon rows. I open the drawer labeled claw right rear. It's what I feared to find. Box claw samples. Each labeled with a name. Number and some notes about the particular subject. Age, weight, breed, coloring. Every component that makes up a cat is laid out nearly in front of us. As a scientist, I'm used to seeing animal parts, but there's something different about this place. The sheer volume is overwhelming. Cat after butchered cat. It's horrifying. I feel sick. I know what this place reminds me of. A morgue. Haha! -ha, I called it! What the hell is this? Is this what they're doing to the cats on the that die here? I don't think they're doing it to the cats that die. I think they're killing cats. I wonder if they're even waiting for them to die. But I keep my thoughts to myself. I look through the notes that Pauper left on the top of the cabinet. It looks like they harvest these from the cats that die during testing. So they can study the effects of various compounds on each of the specimens. Neither Kibbles nor I feel curious anymore. We decided to close this particular door behind us. That was dark. Does this... Fuck. Okay, we're going to rest. Have a lovely nap and wake up feeling rejuvenized. Yep, the magic. We should do some romance. Who are our... Oh, we're, oh we can... Oh, we just got Ravenpaw. Let's see how she's doing. Ravenpaw's health has made some heartening improvements lately. So much so that the professor and I decided she didn't need to be in isolation anymore. It could be moved to the lab for further treatment. As I because I can't talk. As I prepare the solve in my pestle and mortar, I'm distracted by a tiny plate of sound. I turn around and it's Ravenpaw, and Ravenpaw's curled up in her cage, motionless. As I resume my work, there it is again. I realize she's humming. Is that you? I thought you were asleep. Hmm. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize I was humming out loud. What is that tune? Oh, it's just a song my mom used to sing for me. I hum it sometimes to get to sleep. I wonder if like her and McMurphy are brother, brother, sister or something like that. Because that, that's like the second time someone's mentioned their mother. And the, the first one I believe was McMurphy. And he also talked about um, Raven Paul, so... It sounds lovely. Maybe if you taught it to me, I could sing it to you when you're feeling poorly. Ravenpaw frowns at me and buries her face under her paw. Can't sing. I disagree. I bet you have a lovely voice. No. I put my tools down and go over to her. Well, maybe you'd like you'd like to listen to some songs instead. I believe this has a music library. Take the catalog from my lab coat pocket. Uh, let me see. How do I work this thing? I haven't used this function before. I fumble with the options until a song called Summertime begins to play. How about this? What is that? It's by Soft Summer. Do you like it? It's catchy, right? What the hell? I'm just listening to this for a second. Oh god. It's making me want to claw my eyeballs out of my skull. Oh, well, let's turn this off then, shall we? I frantically fiddle about with a catalog until the music stops. I think my ears might actually be bleeding. Oh gosh. I'll go get my otoscope and some cotton buds. Not literally, you donkey. 
Oh, right. Of course. You are making fun of me. Never seen Ravenpaw be so open. It's great that she's in inching out of her shell, but I'm not sure how best to react. Well, I think I can download more music onto this thing. What would you like to listen to? It's okay. You don't need to waste your data on me. It's not a waste of it's not a waste if it would make you happy. Ray, go on. Ray, go on. You must have a favorite band. I don't get that. Oh, Ray, Ravenpaw. I get it. Okay. Ravenpaw goes quiet, lost in thought, until finally she mumbles her response. The Mad Catters, high tea. I don't want to seem uncool by admitting that I've never heard of the Mad Catters, let alone any of their songs, so I give her a nodding, no, a knowing nod and start searching the music app. Wait a second. What the flying fuck? Like, this is pretty decent for like a like a death metal kind of song. <laughs> Be agreeable. Wow, this is loud. Yeah, great, isn't it? Uh, yes, very loud. You said that already. I know, I'm just really struck by the loudness. You like this band then? Absolutely, they're in my top five favorite bands. Wow, listen to that. Whoa, cool. What's your favorite Mad Catter song? Let's put it on. Let's put it on next. I uh, can't remember the name of it. It, the one that goes in panic. I do my best in person with a glittery scream, much like what's going on now. Apparently, that's playing over and over. Ravenpaw's face lights up. Good choice. That's one of my favorites too. Uh, what other yowl bands do you like? Oh, that's such a difficult question. There's so many good ones I simply couldn't choose. We lie. We're lying to her. I should have chose the other thing. Have you heard Claw Tast Claw Clostic? Oh, um, yeah, I think so. I'm becoming more and more uncomfortable. Why did I just? Why didn't I just tell the truth? I want a Raven Paul to like me, but I can't keep this up. If I tell her now, I'll break a little bit of a trust she's put in me today. Also, she's going to think I'm a total loser. The song, their song, Dogfight, is freak. I have to style this out and end as quickly as possible. Oh, goodness. Where did the time go? I need to get to the lab. This is the lab. Yes, the other, the lad, I mean, to say lad. I have to go check Zane about something. You call him lad? Oh, you call him a lad? Lie upon lie, I need to leave. It's a joke, really. Now officially speaking, now I'm officially speaking gibberish. You're weird. I, you have no idea. I throw a nervous laugh over my shoulder and make note to myself. Do not lie to Ravenpaw. Just as I'm about to exit, you hear a small cat speak. Wait. Hmm? You... You said you would sing to me. I feel myself go cold and self-consciousness and consciousness engulfs me. But I tried my hardest not to show it. Well, yes, if you'd like. If you really want to, I suppose I wouldn't mind. I clear my throat and feel myself begin to blush. So, what shall I sing? Any favorites? I don't know. What did your mom used to sing to you? Oh, crikey. She used to sing a lot of things, but I don't know if I could remember any of them. Let me think. Oh, I know. Bounce little baby on my knees, soft and pink and chubby. When you awake, you'll have your tea and and a bath, so you're not so so you're not grubby. I don't know the song, but dream, little baby, on my lap, hap 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 happy. There's a kiss for your sweet nose, and now I'll change your nappy. As I sing, I notice Rainpaw vis visibly relax. She stretched out a bit and realized it's the first time I've seen her uncurl herself. Although there's plenty of room in her crate, she always she's always a tiny ball of fur in a corner. When I finish singing, she opens one eye. That was traumatic. You should probably get back to your work now. Rude! 
Rainpaul makes a small squeaky sound I've not heard her make before. Are you okay? Yes. She's laughing. And so are you. That was adorable! I'm kind of excited to do this with Raven Paul now. We're at 70.8. Doesn't feel like we've gotten much done. Okay, Raven Paw. Meow, meow. meow. In the lowest drawer, right on. In the lowest drawer, right in the back. No, I can't find it, Ray. You're sure it wasn't in the cupboard? The cupboard? No, it's there. Keep reaching. It might have slipped down in the back. You're joking, right? My hand can't squeeze. Oh, hang on. I feel something nestled under the bottom of the drawer. I think I've got it. If I could just... I'm trying to get it... I'm tr I'm tr I'm tr I try inching it out of the space behind the drawer, but it keeps slipping. Just take the drawer right out. It won't come out. Something is jamming it. Well, give it a yank. Ray, it doesn't work like that. I don't want to break the cabinet. Wait, if I try... I feel around the side walls of the cabinet for any blockages, and fi my hand finds a cold protrusion. Oh, I think I found the perpetrator. I wiggle the offending item loose and pull my hand out to inspect what it is. To my surprise, it's a bottle of nail polish. Again? In a muted dusty pink, in a muted dusty pink color. I decide not to ponder why exactly. There's a bottle of nail polish stashed away in the lab. And focus instead on the task at hand. Like, this is the second bottle of nail polish we found. The drawer, the drawer slides out with ease now, and I'm able to retrieve the book. Thoughts, uh, Thoughts in Verse by L. Rutherford. Who is L. Rutherford? Rain Paul casts an eye down for, at her four paws. One of the research assistants before you found this book somewhere along the beach she used to read me some of the poems we never worked out who the author was but we think they probably came from the shipwreck r rutherford huh this is the first time i've considered that other humans on the island may have had their own relationships with my cats i don't like to think about it but i'm not sure why I flick through the little brown book. The writing is very faint, but still clear enough to read. About half the pages are filled with neat words written in ink. And then suddenly, it's blank. He didn't finish it, I suppose. I like the one on page three. It's really dark. Rimpal seems to seems more lively than usual today. I hope that means she's getting better. Or at least getting used to me. You know, like we stopped giving her that medicine and she got better. That's that's a good sign. It's also a sign of whatever they're giving these cats is fucking killing them. When darkness advances and silence makes its retreat, the sound begins where beach and forest meet. Huh. Yowling and hissing and awful cries. Then like stars in the blackness, the thousands of eyes. The sea's fierce temper... Seems kinder than here. This hell full of danger and hardship and fear. Huh. There's a long pause. Hmm. I wonder what it means. Are you backward? Well, I know it's describing the island, but I wonder what happened to the author. It sounds rather distressing. Rather distressing? <laughs> distressing? Rather distressing? Ugh. Humans can be so exhaustingly repressed sometimes. Just think about it. Imagine this place. This place before the clumsy humans cut a swath through it and claimed it for science before your cozy tents and generators and protective gear. All that time ago, mysterious and overgrown, terrifying branches twist up in the blackness like monstrous golems. The yelling of unidentified animals endlessly boring into your brain through, throughout the nights, making sleep impossible. No friendly little brook to bathe in. Nothing to soothe the gnawing pain of starvation. 
the filthy baking heat of the day, the relentless cold of the long night, the slow drawing of realism that realism oh the slow slow drawing realization that there's no escape. Oh, this is where the journey ends. This is the final destination. Hell on earth. Wow, that was deep. It's obvious that Raven Paws thought this through, thought about this poem a lot. I feel bad for being insensitive and human. Must have been horrific. Yes. Be vulnerable. You really put yourself in their shoes as if you were there. I admire that. How else are you going to understand? I'm a scientist. I'm trained to stand back and observe. Be impartial. But if you keep a distance, you'll miss the detail. Oh, I didn't... Oh, I don't. It's about proximity as much as location. Sometimes I have to get up clo very close and even microscopically close. But I'm still on the outside looking in. I see the finest of details, but I don't think it that's what you're talking about, is it, Ray? You mean getting inside to the heart of it? Yes, I suppose so. It's the hue or innuendo, the essence of something that defines what it is. That's not always obvious from the outside. Well, it's very obvious in this poem. I wonder why I wanted to shy away from it. I'm not brave like you. <laughs> Are you kidding? Or fishing for compliments, maybe? I feel my face get hot. I wasn't. I'm playing. You have plenty of courage. You came here to the island. Not everyone would. You've held up under, well under a very difficult conditions. Then there's the whole... Rawr, cat monster, rawr thing. I'm taken aback by her sudden impression, and it makes me laugh. How's that going, by the way? I shrug my shoulders. Sometimes if I... Sometimes if I make a little progress on the antidote, I feel really fine with it. But... But if something I'm try trying fails or pro progress slows down, I have a sleepless night myself, making myself sick with worry. Then there are times when I forget about it altogether. How can I complain when I see what you guys have had to deal with? We're silent for a while. It's not uncomfortable. Eventually, Ray, it's Ray who breaks it. Oh, go on then. What? I know you're just dying to read the funny one. Not really. But there is this little lim limerick that I thought was hilarious. She rolls her big eyes and smiles. Okay, here go. Okay, here goes. There was a young deck swab named Davy, whose hair was exceptionally wavy. I asked him, "Tell pray, what's got it that way?" He answered, "Tis drinking me gravy." What? That was dumb. She cannot help but laugh at the awfulness of it, and we both keep laughing till we have tears in our eyes. I suppose I ought to be making tracks. Okay. Would you just read me a lullaby one as I fall asleep, please? Yeah, yes, I would like I like that one too. Okay. I lay out here and watch the stars, and all the world comes clear to me. The patterns soothe my battle scars. They show I'm where I'm meant to be. And while the sea is kind to me and the rocks and rocks me in my slumber, and all the stars, the near the nears and fars overwhelm me with their number. I think of you, the brightest star, lost so young, gone so far. And when my final day is done, I'll follow the, to the place you have gone. Then back together, you and I, will brighten up another sky. That was actually pretty well written. I look down at so the soft... I look down at the softly snoring cat. She looks so peaceful. Pet, 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 pet. Okay, I think now we'll do a research. Because we're, we're getting somewhere. See, we have, what, 15 and 13? 13 is taking vitals. Time to check some of our test subjects. Nothing fancy, just a routine checkup. Time to release some of the kittens we've been holding. It'll be sad to see the little ones go. Well, we know what's going to happen. They're going to die. What the fuck? Look at this! That is a weird drawing. 
We'll do that one. I feel like I'm buried under a mountain of samples that need to be sorted in log. And some days are like this. Some days are like this. My back and neck are beginning to seize up, so I decided it's time to step out and stretch my legs for a few minutes. I hear the mewling of the kittens as soon as I'm out of the tent and follow the sound. Sure enough, Professor Popper and Miss Marigold are at the large kitten crate. They seem to be lifting them from their crate into a transport porter cage. Ah, oh, Paul. Have you finished that work already? You really are a marvel. Actually, I'm not even halfway through. I was just taking a quick break. What are you two doing? Time to be pushed from the nest, so to speak. Oh, already? I thought it wouldn't be till next week at least. Some are faring so well it would be cruel to keep them incarcerated. They have plenty of protection out there, so it's very so it's a very it is a very safe island for the most part. Some professor who's staying? Just a couple, I think. This chap for certain. He picks up a plump gray male that Trixie insisted we tag. He look he looks at a, a picture. He looks a picture of health to me. I don't understand. Really? But he looks so well, quite advanced, too. Yes, how deceiving looks can be, sometimes. I feel for I feel a moment of attention here, and could swear I saw a look pass between the Professor and Miss Marigold. May I ask what's wrong with him, Professor? Yes, of course, Paul. An inquiring mind is to be encouraged, but alas, an overworked mind is no good to anyone. So I will go through it with you another time when you have less on your plate. I stand for a moment like an idiot before I realize I've been dismissed. Which is exactly like everything he does is dismisses us. Oh yes, I really ought to get back to work, back to my cataloging. Reluctant, reluctantly make my way back to the, my mountain of work. I can't help but feeling uncomfortable. I'll be keeping a close eye on that little furball. Yes, new unlocks. Research 17. No, it's time to rest again. Look at that. I'm in class in my university. The tutor, the, my tu the tutor is late and we're sitting and waiting. I turn to my friend who sits by me to make a joke about the tutor's car breaking down. My friend isn't there. Instead, there's a giant cat. Ah! Looks like an elder. It bares its teeth and teeth at me and lets out a menacing low growl. Just as I'm about to scream, the tutor arrives. It's Professor Popper. You look like you've seen a ghost, Paul. I'm trying to answer back. To tell him, tell him to look behind me. The words won't come out. I'm rigid with fear. Can't move. Can't speak. Can't scream. Everyone else is acting like things are normal. Can't they see it? I force myself to turn again and look at a terrifying cat, but it's not there. There's just an ordinary domestic cat, and everyone's laughing at me now. Now I see everyone from the island. Marigolds, Joe, Bob, Zane, Pauper, all pointing and laughing. Look at that picture. They had to have been on some drugs when they drew this shit. I jump out of my seat to leave, and I'm in bed, in my tent. Sat bolt upright. I shouldn't have eaten cheese so close to bedtime. So now we have research 17, which is... Uh, what time is it? Is that... Is the catalog going off? Okay, we're gonna do this one. I'm waking by the sound of the catalog receiving a message. I squint under my pillow to see Ms. Mr. Marigold's name light up on the screen. His texts are still rather cryptic. I wonder if he knows I figured out what he's mis what that he's the mysterious messenger. I decide not to tell him for the foreseeable future. Those three little kittens are so small and helpless. I don't think they would stand a chance without you to protect them. Keep a watch. <laughs> Keep a watchful eye, Cat Nanny. He's referring to the three kittens that Professor Popper decided to hold back when he let the other 
Others back in the wilds. Why would Mr. Marigold be interested in the kittens? Either way, I learned to take these messages seriously. So I make a note to check on them in my lunch break today, just to be sure everything's all right. I said to take my lunch to the lab. Mrs. Marigold let me make a sandwich out of some leftover ham from last night's meal. Hello, my lovelies. Here you are, one, two, three, all snoring peacefully. I feel relieved and a little foolish for worrying. I suppress a child, childish giggle and open one of the cages to give a tag, the tagged kitty a cuddle. Hello, sleepy pants. Carefully stroke him with a finger, with my finger as he continues to snooze in my hand. Oh, what's this? My finger runs over a little lump on the back of his neck, which elites a small squeal from the plump gray kitten. My heart stops in my chest. I quickly move the examination table. I slowly blow the fur, soft fur out of the way and catch a glimpse of a bright red gash in his between his shoulder blades. He's too young to be tagged. It's oh, He was too young to be tagged. It's got infected. With trembling hands, I reach for my catalog and scan his tag so I can erase the information before I move the chip. Cat. Huh. Scan failed. No tag found. I try again. Scan filled, no tag found. That was... That was fucking weird. Yeah. Trust me, I won't anything harm you. I've come prepared. Ravenpaw eyes the basket suspiciously and I realize it looks to her like a cage. Okay, let's rethink this. Uh, how about I carry you in my arms? Like a baby? Yes. Uh, no, like a... Like a princess. A princess? Really? Ravenpaw shoots me a withering, withered, withering, withering look. Well, you know that what? You know what I mean, right? I can hold this pillow like so and you can relax on top of it. And survey your kingdom. You really are bad at reading people, aren't you? I'm not one of those gullible domesticate domestic cats like Fruity Cootie or whatever her name is. If I leave this lab, I want to do it with some dignity, human. Fruity Cootie? <laughs> She's talking about Snooty Booty, and that's fucking hilarious. Snooty Booty would have loved that. Yes, of course. I'm sorry. Maybe it was a bad idea to try this today. Let's do it tomorrow. Oh, come on, Ray. You were so excited about this earlier. Don't give up now. Well, that was then, and this is now. I'm tired. I'm too tired anyway. You're always tired. That's part of the problem. We have to start somewhere, right? Or else you'll never get strong again. Yeah, but what if we see other cats? What if we do? Look, I'll be with you no matter who you see. <laughs> no matter who we see, won't. You won't have to deal with anyone on your own. Any Anyone who? Who do you think we'll see? It's no one. But you said no matter who we see. So you think we'll see someone? No, Ravenpaw, stop this. You have to go out sometime. Why not now? I don't know. I just... Ravenpaw looks so sad and tiny that I decide not to push her anymore. Okay. Don't worry, we'll try again tomorrow, okay? No, let's do it. Aha! Reverse psychology for the win! Oh wow, really? A cat that just seconds ago looked so helpless suddenly looks fiercely determined. Yes, but if you hurt me, human, I will, I will kill myself so just so I can come back and haunt you for the rest of your short, miserable life. This is like... She is very dramatic! This cat is. I suppress a laugh. I understand. I'm just going to lift you now, okay? She is so light, I'm shocked, but I but I don't show it. I can feel the tremble of her frail body through the makeshift cushion. We've decided we decided a folded blanket would be best so we can use it for other things when we find our spot. 
Suddenly, Ravenpaw takes a short breath. I freeze. What? What's wrong? It's the air. We're right by the water, aren't we? I can smell the change. She laughs. I'm struck with how much this cat has come on since I stopped her treatment. Quote, treatment. Only a week ago. She had no sense of smell. It's good, right? Yes, human. It's good. She inhales deeply. It's very good. Would you like to sit down here for a while? We're still close to the compound. No. Go on a little further. I want to see it. Take me to the sea. The seaweed is always greener in somebody else's lake. We walk for a short while longer until we find a small collection of rocks that look like a good resting spot. This looks like somewhere Trixie would like. Yeah, she's always drawn to the rocks. Uh, minerals? I miss her. You were friends? Yes, when we were little. Do you want some water? A little snack? I take a... I take the picnic out of my backpack and I arrange it on the blanket. I decide to gently press her. So, how come you were locked and... You were locked up and Trixie wasn't? Ooh, this is a good question. I was never really free. I was part of the breeding program. My mother was bred with one of the elder cats, and as you see, us kittens are tagged and set free in 12 weeks, except we're not. Not all of us, anyway. But I've helped to release the kittens myself. Yeah, sure. Hmm? What, you actually let them out into the cat cages yourself? This is the second time, and this is the thing, though. We've seen what they do to those cats. Well, no, but I've prepared them. I prepared them for release, and then they're gone. Um, yes, I've never had reason to question it. I'm getting that sick feeling in my stomach again. So where are they? Not everything is a, is as above board as you'd like to think. Yeah, I'm starting to see that. I right, fuck, fuck that. I've been seeing it for a while. Or above ground, either. What do you mean, Ray? If there's something I should know... I think that's enough for one day. I'm starting to feel woozy. I'd like you to take me back now, if you don't mind. Oh, come on. No, 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 you need to tell me. You need to tell me. No, come on. Talk to me, Ray. What happens to the kittens? What happened to you? Ravenpaw closes her eyes tight as, as she's hoping that she, when she opens them, I'll be somewhere else. You've been doing so well, really opening up. Don't go backwards. Go backwards? You really don't understand, do you? I'm not just some Marty little girl. I'm the way I am because of you, your people, your scientists, with your observations and poking and prodding and unbiased opinions. Of course I'll never fully up to you, human. Oh, pfft, words. Of, of course I'll never fully open up to you, human. You wouldn't know what to do with me if I did. If you can't st stick a label on it, it doesn't exist. That's what you do did with my mom, isn't it? That's how you were able to sleep peacefully after you murdered her. Jesus Christ! I am. I feel very confused and very guilty, even though I'm nothing. I've. I even though I'm nothing to do with what the thing she's describing. I know you don't believe. I know you don't believe I'm like that, Ray. You're angry and hurt, and I don't blame you one bit for hating us. All of us. But if you didn't think I was different, you wouldn't be sitting out in here with me in the first place. She's looking away, so I can't read her eyes. I'll never be able to fully understand what it's like to be you. To have your experiences. I am trying, though. I'm doing everything I can to change things, not the past. You have to find your way with, to live with that. But the future, how you can live from here on, I want to make a difference. Won't you at least give me a chance? Here's the deal. She's turned her head and is fixing me with her huge, is fixing me with her huge eyes. If and when you come up with a viable plan, I'll do everything within my power to help you nail it. Deal. 
I raise my hand for a moment of excitement and realize it's too late. Ravenpaw would never high five me. She looks at my hovering palm. She looks me in the eye. It looks me in the eye. What are you? What are you even doing? I clumsily style clumsily style it out. Taking you back now. I'm just taking you back. Back to your cage, bitch. <laughs> How dare you not trust me? I'm gonna be one of you soon. All right, let's continue with Ravenpaw. It's late. Well, after work hours, Ravenpaw asked me to visit her when Professor Popper finished his shift because she has something important to tell me. The lab is cold and silent. I can just make out the reflection of Ravenpaw's big eyes. I flip the light switch and the room becomes illuminated with a harsh, dazzling brightness that makes me squint. I came as soon as I could. I had no idea the professor stays up so late. How does he function on such little sleep? I ask that question of myself every day. Keep your voice down, human. We don't want to draw any attention. Maybe we should turn the lights off. Sometimes the caretaker caretakers do random patrols. Who? You mean Mr. and Mrs. Marigold? I'm sure they're dead to the world right now. You'd be surprised. Anyway, enough chin wagging. I have something for you. A gift? Of course not, you div. Where on earth would I have gotten you a gift? The local gift shop? <laughs> oh, of course. I'm sorry. So what is it? Why? Because I think I can trust you now. I'm taken aback and feel flushed with pride. You can, Ray. I've sworn to help you, and I won't let you down. So, you want this or not? She pushed her paws towards me and realized she has something under it. My stomach lurches as I worry it may be a spider or a fly. I hope she's not expecting me to eat it. What is it? Dunno. Thought you might know. As she lifts her paw, I'm relieved to see it's nothing that nothing is moving. And on closer inspection, I realize what it is. Oh, that's called a key. It's used to open things that are locked, like doors or safes. You really are touched. I know what the a key is. I meant you might be able to figure out what it opens. But I'm losing hope by the second. Oh, forgive me. Well, where did you get it? Best not to ask. Up the professor's butt or something, I don't know. I'm serious, Ray, this key could be important. And if I know where you got it from, it'll be easier to work out what it opens. Grandpa eyes me skeptically. I thought you trusted me. Fine. I got it from Miss Marigold. You mean Mara? The caretaker's wife? She's not the caretaker's wife, you critten. She's the caretaker she's the caretaker as much as he is. Uh, yes, of course, but the key, Ravenpaw. She came clean to clean my cage last night. Too lazy to take me out. Too lazy to take me out of it first, of course, and Mr. Marigold came in and gave her the key. She put it here. Ravenpaw indicates the co the corner of her cage. Because her hands were full, then they had the, a huge argument, and while they were shouting at each other, I used my ninja skills to hide it, hide the key under my paw. That was that. Nin All these cats think they're ninjas and shit. She didn't notice? She was so worked up about him that the, she clean forgot about it. Left without even bothering to refill my water bowl. So what makes you think the key is important? Because when he handed it to her, he said, It's your turn. I'm fed up with... He says, It's your turn. I'm fed up with being the one who always has to do the dirty work. His dirty work. Whose dirty work? Professor Prospero's, obviously. Prospero? Pooper. Oh, pauper. Of course. Look. I've really got to hurry back to my tent now, or I'll be a wreck in the morning. But thank you for this, Ravenpaw. I'll find out what it, this key opens, I promise. You better... She got an attitude... 
A catitude. Ah, oh, we got recon 18. Yeah, see, I've done all three recons. Ah, uh, I gotta rest. You had a lovely nap and wake up feeling revitalized. Magic! We're at almost 80%. We're almost done with this, but we're so close to being like... We, we only got so much to do and then we're done, so I don't think we're going to be able to finish the uh, antidote. I think we're going to be cats forever. Alright, Ravenpaw. Let's get you to love me. So what shall we read today? I flicked through the little book of poetry, Ravenpaw, and I have gone through most of the poems. We're dragging them out uh, to one a day now because we're dreading finishing it all together. We've got Alone, Love Sonnet, Bonnie Boat, and Hunger. Ravenpaw looks less engaged than usual. She usually perks up when I get the poetry book out, but she's sitting hand dog in the corner of her cage, struggling, shrugging at each title. I think we should read, read a happy poem today. Something to cheer us up. How about Bonnie Boat? And Paul rolls her eyes. She hates the silly poems and prefers the dark, brooding ones about stormy seas and missing home. Yeah, she also likes fucking death metal, so... Just leave it. What do you mean, Ray? I don't want to listen to poetry. It's a futile distraction from reality. This is a first. I'm not sure how to react. I thought she enjoyed our reading time. Ray... Is there something you want to talk about? Raven Paul lets out a heavy sigh. You wouldn't understand. I shrug. Try me. No, you wouldn't understand because I don't even understand. I feel so deeply yet I can't articulate it at all. It makes me want to scream, cry, laugh, sleep. I feel... Ugh. Don't waste your time with me. I've got big important human thing you've got big important human things to do you don't want to be babysitting a cat like me ray i love spending time with you as soon as i wake up i feel excited to see you read poems with you discuss things with you you're so unique you have an amazing insight and a delightfully wicked sense of humor i'm not babysitting you you're my friend i want you to talk to me when you're feeling down ray because you deserve to be happy Especially after all you've been through here. Ravenpaw looks frustrated, but she mumbles. I guess. I guess I know which poem I'd like you to read now. Maybe L will be able to say it better than I could. Read me Love Sonnet. Okay. I lack the words to say the things I feel. My tongue is slow and of the humdrum kind... And though my eyes were erstwhile keen as steel, you have eclipsed the sun and made me blind. I do not see the blight that you bewail, the fuzz of fur so soft against my skin. I will not shun the sweet curl of your tail, nor shut the door and never let you in. Our cursed fate has dealt us bitter blows, and yet methinks that mine are worse by far. For as the night gets colder, your fur grows while I am left adrift with no load star. Is there one would laugh and not feel pity for this poor wretch whose love is turning kitty? Obviously, they're reading about someone that turned into a kitty cat. Oh wow, it sounds like Elle was in love with a werecat? I wonder how that worked. I knew you wouldn't get it. I feel like I'm hurting her feelings without intending to, or understanding how. Explain it to me, Ray. It's not rocket science. I mean, it's just love is love. You can't choose who you fall in love with, right? If only you could, things would be much easier. But sometimes love just creeps up and hijacks you. And no matter how much you don't like it or try to get away from it, once it's got you, it's got you and there's no breaking free. You make it sound awful and... Oh, well it is if you're not sure of the, of the person you're in love with. But it can be amazing too. Obstacles that felt 
immeasurable before suddenly feel insignificant. Things you thought you'd never be able to do are done. Poems you used to hate become love songs that sing to your soul. Human, cat, were cat, elder, whatever. Love does not discriminate. It will not be controlled or boxed up merely to suit their prior prejudices. So we just have to grow and pair and, and come clean and see where it takes us. So I love you. What are you going to do about that? Holy shit. She professed her love to me. I guess I'm just going to say I love her too. Because why not? I'm going to be a cat anyway. There's a long silence while I gather my thoughts, but eventually I'm able to say, Oh, Ravenpaw, I thought it was just me. I didn't even hope you would feel the same way. I know we've become close, but I resigned myself to thinking we could never be more than friends. That you wouldn't accept me. You really do go on, don't you? I blush with happiness. I suppose we both do a bit. So I guess we're struck with e stuck with each other then. I guess we are. She smiles the biggest smile I've ever seen on her beautiful face. Never seen a cat smile, but uh, they do apparently. I've seen cats hiss. I've seen them claw at my ass. I've seen them make me sneeze. And I've never seen them smile. All right, research. We got our last research. Let's do it. I'm ready. Let's finish this. And we got 18, which is... Looking forward. There's a bloody... That's scary. Bloody scalpel. And 13, which is check on some of the test subjects. Okay. Uh, I want to do 18. Returning after the morning gathering spe uh, of after a morning gathering specimens, I decided to take the side route into camp so that I could check up on the kittens. I stopped in my tracks. Stopped stopped in my tracks to see the large rearing pin is empty, and upon further inspection, the smaller trans transitory crates nearby are also empty. I'm surprised and disappointed that the professor has released my gray kitten without me. I was so it was so clear that I wanted to be there to see him off. Ah, Paul, what perfect timing! I was worried that you may not make may not be back. The professor has snuck up behind me, making me jump. Ah, oh, thank goodness! I thought I'd miss him being released. Are we doing it now? I'm afraid not. In fact, I have some difficult news for you. I feel my stomach lurch. What is it, Professor? Has something happened to Plumpy? I did warn you not to get too attached, my dear. Naming them isn't always a good idea. All becomes so very personal. However, I fall prey to the same temptations myself. They really are so seductive. What? Which makes situations like this one all the more impossible. I'm hoping you will be able to help this, be able to help this time. Yes, of course, Professor. What do you need? Your little Plumpy has run into a spot of bother, I'm afraid. His tests have shown that his kidneys aren't working properly. And although we have tried all the usual treatments, he doesn't seem to be responding well. We think this is his only chance to receive a donor kidney from another cat. But before that can happen, we need to remove his native kidneys and place, uh, and place him in dialysis for a while. To see if he's a viable subject for transplant. Oh, I'm shocked to hear that, Professor. He seems so well. Sadly, with the very young ones, the type of problem overwhelms them so rapidly, it's often too late to do anything by the time we know they're unwell. So, you'll help me with the surgery? I believe you've reached that stage of your veterinary training that you can assist. Of course, yes. I would. Be, it would be an honor. Go and sort yourself out, then. We shall meet in the lab in 30 minutes. It's hard to take it all in. I feel nervous, but also excited to be taking part of a life-saving surgery. The stuff I've done in college seems so long ago now. I hope I don't mess up. The professor and I have scrubbed in, and we're checking 
and are checking we have the necessary equipment laid out and ready to use. Plumpy has already been shaved and pre pre mid primed prim whatever. So he is sleeping peacefully. I must say it's a luxury to have another pair of hands, Paul. I usually do I usually have to do this sort of thing alone. It's a privilege to help, sir. I'm sure I'll learn a lot from you. So shall we begin? Next half hour passes in a flash, sorting out anesthesia, intubating, I don't know, intubi intubating, and finally the incisions, which will determine whether this little chap will live or die. I'm completely awed by Professor Popper's skill and professionalism. Everything is done in the highest standard. Finally, we remove the native kidneys, place them in jars, and preserving fluid for further testing, and get ready to stitch him up. But that's not what happens. Instead of stitching him up to see the professor take a scalpel and cut an artery, I cannot trust my eyes. I think I must have imagined it. But suddenly, all hell breaks loose. We have a bleed. We have a bleed. I have no idea what to do. I'm frozen on the spot. I want to scream. I saw you cut him. But I cannot make a sound. Paul, move. We need to stem the bleeding. Yes, I'm sorry. And suddenly, I'm doing... All the right things, but I feel though I'm outside myself looking it on. The scene is tragic. So much blood from such a tiny thing. Half of it is half of it is over me, in my eyes, my hair, and then it's still again. And we've lost him. I'm sorry, my dear. We did all we could. You fucking killed him, Mr. Wizard! Paul Nye the evil guy? What the fuck is wrong with you? But what happened? It's a, a textbook hemorrhage, I'm afraid. It happens sometimes when you're least when you're least expecting it. There's nothing that can be done in a situation like that. The one good thing we have left is to take the rest of his organs and put them to good use to help other kittens. You are fucking evil. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I wanna you, you wanna harvest his other organs? So that he didn't die in vain. It would be wrong not to, don't you think? I'm speechless. I need to get away. Of course, I understand It's all too if it's all too much for you. Perhaps you'd like to go on and lie down for a bit? I can carry on from here. I'm used to it. I don't remember leaving, but I'm grateful to be alone in my tent. Wow! I've come to the forest to gather my thoughts. This morning I noticed another change. Okay, we've, we've read this before. We're in the deepest part of the forest. It's become our favorite hangout since I ditched the idea of finding an antidote and followed my heart instead. No prizes for guessing where it led me straight to Ravenpaw. It took me a while to convince her that I was doing the right thing. She said, if you change your mind, then when it's all too late, you may end up hating me. But I could never hate her. I love her. I just want you to be sure I'm more than ready to go with you. I know I can leave this cage if you're by my side. And that was it. We left the lab together that night and have been side by side, by side ever since. Look at my cat version. Skip this one. It's just noise. You're such a granny. I'm going to turn it up. Raven Paul fiddles with her fiddles and paws at the old catalog until the until my, uh, at my old catalog until the volume reaches max. I bury my face under my paw. <laughs> Come on, wrinkles. Learn to appreciate the classics. Trust me, I do. This is rehashed rubbish. I shout over the throbbing bass. Raven Paul laughs and hits me with her tail. Okay, okay. Let's listen to something else. Raven Paul skips through song after song until she stops at a gentle acoustic guitar accompanied by a soft soulful angsty vocals better much this is actual music i feel raven paul gently entwine her tail with mine and we both purr in time to the thrumming guitar it's funny how stressed i got trying to uncover the antidote to this I never dreamed it could be i could be this happy i could have saved myself a lot of worry i never thought i was capable of being this happy either but there's still one thing stopping me from being totally blissful. Oh? What's that? 
Your terrible taste in tunes. I smile and drift off to sleep, feeling happy, safe, and loved. Well, at least it's a happy ending, for the most part. Not for that poor kitten, though. Jesus Christ. Ah, in a relationship with Ravenpaw. Chapter 6. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Showing me all the pictures. Oh, shit. Here we go, all the kitties. Guys, a new research assistant has just stepped off the boat. I ran as fast as I could. We already know about their arrival. We already knew, know about their arrival. Had you been on time for the meeting, you would understand that it doesn't matter anymore. What doesn't matter? I'm afraid you missed most the most important point of the agenda, Trix. We've been outvoted. Outvoted? Yeah, sucks to be you. That's not fair. You can't vote me. You can't outvote me without me present. You can't vote without me present, words. Apparently, we can. And I try I try to cause a delay, but that's like any if it's any consolation, my dear. But I was gathering intel to make the vote more informed. I can assure you that the new assistant looks much more promising than any we've had so far. Oh, Kara, you know this plan doesn't work. We've got to stop. We've catified far too many humans already, yeah? It is all rather exhausting. Doing the same thing over and over. And experiencing different results. And expecting different results. If you do what you always did, you'll get what you always got. Right, that that is a good way of putting it. Was the what is the meaning of insanity? The definition of insanity? But that's ridiculous. The more we try, the greater chances of success. Come on guys, don't quit. Five minutes before the miracle. What if this one is the one? The one who will free us, the one who will figure out figure it all out. Please. I adore you, my dear. But you really are so naive. Figure it all out. Forgive me for for my merriment, but it is all rather amusing. What's so funny about it? I think what Snooty is saying, Kara, is that humans don't seem to seem able to get the right balance to be much of real help to us. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Good job, Kibbles. That was a good reference. Who's Jack? It's true, they burn themselves out with work. Or just laze around all day canoodling with the cats. Well, or make rash choices they don't take back. So we need, so we need to help them get the right balance. I cannot give up without a fair shot at it, please. I'm with you. I believe that if we monitor them more closely, we may have a chance. Murph, you're the gam you're a gambler. Take one last one last punt, huh? How can I say no to that angelic face? Hurrah! Revote. Oh man. Well, can we just get on with it? I'm missing out on some important beauty sleep. Okay, cast your vote. Let's see what they do. The end. Snooty booty. It was with wild. With with wild. Fire was mission missing in action. He got shot. Murphy ended up with. Uh, Marine ended up with McMurphy. Sandra was with Kibbles. Ruby ended up just giving up and saying no to helping them. And Paul was with Ravenpaw. Not bad. Yeah, Snoo and Lock meet the devs. Extras. Okay, well. I guess we can do that. A game by a bay team. Oliver. Hiddle and... Ruby Mae Roberts. They did a good job on this game for what it was. Like, it's really weird. It's super fucking weird, but it's definitely the kind of game I play for this this month. So, you know, last considering last year I played a bird game developed by ha -ha, all this stuff, all these names. All 
All right, guys, that was a uh, perfect date. Definitely very interesting. Again, I'd like to thank uh, Jade Moff for gifting me this game so that we could play it and uh, go through it. Um, am I going to try and find all the endings and, and maybe figure it out and get a good ending? No. <laughs> no, I think I'm done with this game. It was fun. Uh, but oh my god, like, it got dark. It got dark really fast. Really dark, really fast, so... Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Until next time, and in whatever game we play next, we want you to stay nerdy.